Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdale here again. In this presentation I'm going to continue my series of videos on vectors. Now in the previous video we talked about a new kind of uh, multiplication between two, uh, two vectors called a cross product. And in this presentation I'm going to build on that and show you an application of the cross product when we're trying to determine areas of parallelograms. Okay, so let me share my screen with you and uh, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so today's presentation is what does the cross product measure? So let's just refresh our memories on what the cross product is. If I've got two vectors, say A and B, then the cross product is defined to be this big mess here where the i, j, k vectors are the usual sort of basis vectors in three-dimensional space. Now, I sh in the previous video, I showed you a, a method of computing this, uh, uh, this cross product using determinants, okay? The geometric uh, interpretation of this multiplication is that the new vector, A cross B, is perpendicular to both the vector A and B, and you, can, you know which way it points depending on the right-hand rule. Okay, so we've already seen that the cross product of two vectors produces a new vector that is perpendicular to both the original vectors. What I'm going to concentrate in this presentation is on the area of a parallelogram and the relationship with the cross product. Okay, so suppose we have a parallelogram that has sides related with the vectors A and B. Now we claim that the area of a parallelogram is given by the magnitude or the length of the cross product A cross B. Okay, now over here, this we, we know this. I mean, if, if if this is the length, say, of the base, and this is the length of the height, uh, the, the, the side, of the uh, parallelogram, then this times this is the perpendicular height and the area is just the length of the base times the perpendicular height. So we know that this is definitely the area of, a, of this kind of parallelogram. And if we can show that this also um, uh, is the area, then the, these obviously two things are equal, okay? So we can compute the uh, area of a parallel, parallelogram just by taking the cross product and looking at its length, okay? So let me um, give you a proof of that. Firstly, um, let theta be the angle between vectors A and B. And in this, uh, in the proof I'm going to give you, I'm going to assume that A the vector A lies along the x-axis, okay? Now, if that's not the case, you, you can still get this proof to, to, to work. Um, I'll show you how to do that at the end, okay? So A and B are both going to lie in the x-y plane, and A is going to lie along the, um, the x-axis, okay? So in this simple setting, A would have uh, position, uh, a uh, uh, column vector like this. B would have a column, B, be comprised of a column vector like this. And I know how to compute the cross product of A and B using this formula here. Well, this looks quite complicated, but a lot of the uh, components are zero. Okay, so if, you, if you're not familiar with this um, determinant way of doing things, then you might want to look at the previous video, okay? Either that or you can just directly apply this formula here, okay? Okay, so let's um, work out this determinant. Well, if I start up here, I cover up the I and I look at the determinant of what's left, that's going to be zero. Then I move on to the J, I do a bit of cover up and I look at the determinant of what's left, that's again zero. 
I cover up the K and I look at the determinant of what's left, that's going to be A1 times B2 minus 0. So this then is the uh, cross product of these two vectors. Okay, so let's take the length of that and we'll see what we have. Okay, so k has length 1 and it's just the following, which is just this. Okay, so the absolute A1 times absolute B2. Okay, now first of all, let's look at this. Uh, the vector A in this setting has that component, and if I take the absolute value of that, then that is the length of A. Okay, so that is the length of the vector A. So what's, what's the uh, absolute of B2? Okay, well, in this setting, the absolute of B2 would be that length there. Okay? Now, in terms of the angle theta, that, just with a little bit of trig, okay, B2, the absolute B2 is just the length of B times the sine of the angle. Okay, that's just a little bit of, of trig. So I can rewrite this as this, and this as the length of the vector b times the sine of the angle between them. And look what we've got. We've got exactly what we had here. So let's call this star, and we'll make a conclusion. All right, and what that means is that this can be used to compute the uh, area of a parallelogram. Okay, now a good question here. Well, you might think, what happens if this vector A doesn't lie um, sort of horizontally on the x-axis? Well, you can always either rotate the, um, the parallelogram so the vector does lie on the x-axis, or you can choose a new set of axes that lie on um, the, such, such that one axis, one of the new axes lie on the vector A. So, you know, it, it's, it's not a big deal just considering these special cases. Okay, now, so, so that, that's a geometric in, uh, uh, explanation of what the cross product measures. And we, we already know that from a previous uh, video that the cross product measures torque, but the length of the cross product can measure area. Okay? Okay, so that's a basic uh, proof between uh, involving the magnitude or the length of the cross product and relating it to area of a parallelogram. Okay, I hope you enjoy this presentation. Please join me for uh, the next presentation where we'll talk about scalar triple products, where we're going to combine the two kinds of multiplication that we've seen in previous videos, the dot product and the cross product. And we'll look at some of its um, applications to volume. Hope you can join me for those presentations. If you have any questions, any comments, put them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.